Yankee Stadium as the video highlights show you it has been all Red Sox tonight a nine nothing lead in the sixth inning Enrique Wilson the leadoff man against Pedro Martinez he has one of the two hits against Pedro a double bag in the third they've had only two base runners Wilson a double and Posada a single Wilson in the top of the order Soriano and Johnson do up Backdoor strike one and two on Enrique Wilson. Of course, he was at the center of that story with Manny last week. He was the Yankee player with whom Manny was socializing. They're very good friends. Enrique Wilson says that Manny might be his closest friend in baseball. Apparently, when Wilson came to the Cleveland Indians, Manny really took him under his wing. And they're even weighing in on this whole thing from the West Coast. Did you see uh, Carlos Bayerga and Shea Hillenbrand commented in a story that was on the wire today? I didn't see that. We can give you some of the cliff notes as we go. 2 2 pitch just inside. Bayerga, of course, played with uh, Mandy in Boston and Cleveland. He says they still talk about uh, twice a week. Nine, of course, a hit for Wilson against Martinez. And it's going to be another double as Nixon plays it out of the corner. So he has two of the three Yankee hits. And Pedro just smiles. What can you do? He knows the drill. This guy is a major thorn in his side. He throws him a changeup this time, and it's a good changeup. But Enrique Wilson goes right down below the knees, pices it off the ground, and drops it in for a base hit. When a guy does that to you, the way he's hit you throughout his career, you just there's nothing you can do but smile. He tried every possible pitch he has against Wilson, and Wilson continues to get hits. Look at that, 10 for 20 against Pedro. Well, years from now, we sit around the grandchildren. Pedro Martinez, he, he wasn't anything. I own that guy. And he'll be exactly right, too. He won't be lying. <laughs> Soriano hits one in the air a long way in right center. And off the wall on a hop. That'll spoil the shutout bid as Wilson's around to score to make it nine to one. Now Soriano is a guy who's had very little success against Pedro. 107 coming into the game, 0 for 2 prior to this at bat, but he gets the cut fastball away and puts it in that gap to the 385. So back to back doubles the Yankees finally get on the board and give the stadium crowd something to cheer them out. Thirty one double seventy four RBIs now for Soriano. Nick Johnson looks at the ball uh, Carlos Baerga by the way. Asked in this article, you're sick, but you can't go to a restaurant with one of your friends. I'm so, I'll clean it up, upset at that team. They're making it so big, said Bayerga. Actually, it's kind of ancient history now, you would think. Shea Hillenbrand, who uh, continues to comment on every subject from nearly 3,000 miles away, with all this riffraff going on, says Shea, he doesn't care about anything, he being Manny. He's 30, 31 years old. He doesn't need to be disciplined. Johnson, a swing and a miss, two and one. Yeah. 
Uh, Shea has, has been his stand since he left Flames, of course, the media. Mm -hmm. for this. The fact that the Manny's teammates were also upset apparently doesn't enter into it. Three and one the count on Johnson. And that's it, huh? That's uh, basically it. Oh, no. They, well, Shea especially has got plenty more. Mm -hmm. Broken bat, grounder down the line, foul. And Pedro tonight against uh, Johnson has really tried to keep the ball inside. Johnson's one of those guys that likes to extend his arms. He had a good game last time against Pedro. Pedro consistently has been trying to uh, jam him tonight. That ball inside, the broken bat, which heads out toward the mound, but the ball foul. So a new bat for Johnson, a full count. The Yankees trying to chip away at this huge deficit. They have one run in here in the sixth. They're still down nine to one. With Soriano at second and nobody out. Bernie Williams on deck and Johnson lofts it to right. Nixon is there. Soriano's not tagging. He went back after the catch was made. One out. Some more for you, oh no! I mean, I just, I'm glad that every week we can read Shea Hillenbrand's reflections about his time in Boston. He said the Boston media is loony, and you can put that in quotation marks. The Boston media is loony. Remember anybody in the media giving him a hard time when he was in Boston? Actually, I thought his relationship was very good with the media while he was here, and also the fans. The fans, he's very popular player. I don't know. Mm. It really doesn't matter, does it? Uh, Shea's also taken some shots from time to time at some of his former teammates. You know, talking about how in the past he's talked about how no one really did much to help him. And in this article, he talks about how Carl Everett and Manny were the only two to take me under their wing in Boston. The only two who ever taught me how to play when I came up. Did he forget Jimmy Williams? I guess he meant among the players. Among the players. He did go on to say a couple of other guys helped too. Troy O'Leary and Darren Lewis. But other than that, Manny was one of those guys who took the initiative to make me feel comfortable. Well, it is true. I mean, that is true that yes. he and Manny were very close. And he and Everett were also very close. But I can't imagine there weren't the other guys that also tried to help him along. I mean, uh, especially when he started with the Red Sox. Wasn't expected to be on the team. Jimmy gave him that third base job. But the, the fact that he he was very close to Manny and he was very close to Kyle Everett at different times when the, they were with the Red Sox. Brooks Robinson, excuse me, uh, Shea Hillenbrand concluded by saying. It's a disgrace that this has to be exploited that the Red Sox bench him and say their best lineup is without him. That's not Grady Little at all. It's obvious to everybody that that's not the right thing to do. You can't say that your best lineup is without Manny Ramirez. I've been there the last two and a half years. That's not their best lineup. Well we all knew that. I mean we knew that obviously when he said that he was not putting his best lineup out no. there because on in that Manny's particular out. day, he thought it gave him the best chance to win, and in fact, they did win. Yeah, they did win, and it was just a way of, uh, without saying he's being punished or putting the time out, it was his way of saying that, uh, you know, this is what we're going to do for a day. I mean, uh, it's unbelievable that we're in the September in a, in a pennant race, but not only a division, but a wild card. And this stuff continues to go on. You know, it, it, it's, it's done now by two days. Yes. I'm just glad that Shea still cares. <laughs> Three and two, the count on Williams. And he walks. That's the first walk of the night given up by Martinez. There is no action in the Red Sox bullpen. Here's
there's Jason Giambi. He continues mired in that lengthy slump 0 for 2 tonight with a strikeout and a fly ball to left. One for his last 31. And one strike in on Giambi. Included in this stretch was an 0 for 25 that he snapped with a home run in their loss Wednesday at Toronto. That was the longest hit the stretch of his career. In the dirt and stopped by Veritek. A ball and a strike on Giambi. One ball and two strikes now. Still good the life on that fastball. 93 from Pedro with some movement to threw it inside and came back on the Giambi. And he's batting with runners at first and second. Soriano at second. Williams at first. They have good speed on the bases. One two pitch inside. Jorge Posada is on deck. Working slowly here in the sixth inning. The 2 2 pitch, he struck him out with a changeup in the dirt. Yambi hears some boos. That's nine strikeouts now for Pedro. Struck him out with a fastball back in the second inning. That time he gets him to chase the changeup. Yambi really, really having a tough, tough time. And he's too good a player, too good a hitter to have this type of slump. And it seems like uh, how Giambi goes, obviously, he's a huge part of this Yankee offense. The Yankee offense has been having a tough time scoring runs. Well, the Red Sox in the race for the East with the Yankees and the wild card with Seattle. And for each of those teams, their key hitter is in a remarkable slump now, Giambi and Ichiro. With Posada, who has struck out in single. He has one of the four Yankee hits. Red Sox lead nine to one. They're out hitting New York 13 to four. The ball outside. 93 pitches now for Pedro. Terrific bounce back performance by Pedro Martinez tonight. Against the team that has given him a very tough time. Posada to the left, a routine fly for Manny drifting over near the line. That ends the inning. New York gets just one, and after six, it's nine to one, Boston. Can I ask you a question about that, Jerry? Your wicked smart. Loomer Loney takes a strike. The stylish all new. And there's a new catcher, John Flaherty. Stylish all new 2003 Honda Accord. I'm sure it's stylish. And it's a wonderful vehicle. It's all new. Is it still all new as a 2003? That yeah, could be one that just came off the uh, assembly line. It could be. Well, we're not going to sell you an all new used one, but Maloney cranks one to deep left. What a night he is having. That one's over the head of Matsui. And Framingham Lou is in the second with a double. And the Red Sox fans chant his name. He has walked twice, singled, and doubled. Well, Maloney gets that inside fastball from Weaver and up over the head of Matsui. Short hops the uh, fence out there in front of that Yankee bullpen. Actually, that's uh, the Red Sox bullpen up past the uh, whatever that section is. 
<laughs> what is that? What do they you call right? that? That uh, what do they call that section out there? Monument Park. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's where the ball ended up. <laughs> See, here's the here's the Red Sox bullpen. This is yeah. the area I'm talking about here. Monument Park. You can sit in Monument Park and watch the game. I think that's something new. Damon pops it up near second base. And Enrique Wilson the catch. Red Sox fans, how about this weekend of sports? UPN 38 and WBZ4 will have it all covered tomorrow night on WBZ4. Patriots kickoff. A half hour season preview then on Sunday at 1130 a.m. on WBZ it's Patriots game day followed by the big Patriots Bills game in Buffalo at one o'clock right after this and every Patriots game tune in for Patriots fifth quarter this week on UPN 38 and the big weekend of sports wraps up with the Red Sox this week at 1030 on UPN 38 and sports final on WBZ. You got all that Jerry. That's a full day of action. A full weekend. Well, how about your uh, prediction? A couple of years ago, and very few people expected anything of the Patriots. I believe you said 10 wins, and that's exactly what they got. I think last year I said nine, didn't I? And that's what they had. Uh, watching the game last night, the Jets, they have some troubles. Miami, Miami should be very good, right? Yes. Um, I'm going to say 11 wins this year. 11 wins. 11 wins. We'll take that to the bank. You've been right on the number each of the last two years. Met Coach Belichick in the uh, Red Sox parking lot about a month ago. He was at the game, and I just happened to meet him. I know he had no clue who I was. I just introduced myself, and I could feel 11 wins. I really could. I would see. I could read it on his face. There was 11 wins emanating from the coach. Yeah. Miller out on the bouncing ball to second. He's a big sports fan. Uh, Bill Belichick. A lot of these football coaches are just tunnel vision, all football. Simon I mean, Bill's a serious football guy, but he does enjoy baseball and other sports. What do you think? Number 53. Gonna, it's going to be close. 10, 11, somewhere in that. I think it'll be more than that. I think they're better than last year. I wish they kept Lawyer Malloy, like a lot of Patriot fans. I think he was a terrific player. Still has a lot of good football left in him. But as we know, in pro sports, a lot of times it's all about the Benjamins. The lawyers in this case and the accountants. They get plenty of Benjamins. Here's Andy Abad just up from Pawtucket. Hitting for Nomar Garcia Para in the seventh inning, just a second major league at bat. The guy who spent a lot of time in the minor leagues. And he chops one foul. I would guess that this is only because the Red Sox have an eight run lead but I am a little bit surprised uh, of taking Nomar out to, at this stage of the game. Yeah me too. I wonder if there's some kind of injury involved here. Uh, Didn't maybe. notice anything. No. What a thrill this must be for Andy Abad. 31 years old 11 seasons in professional baseball. This is just his second major league at bat. He appeared in a game for Oakland September 10th of 2001 he popped out in his only plate appearance. Now of course the next day was September 11 2001 and after that tremendous tragedy baseball shut down for a while he got hurt during one of their workouts and did not appear again and back into the minors had a nice year at Pawtucket he was leading the International League this year with 93 runs batted in Pawtucket in the playoffs right now and leading their series with Ottawa. Two games to none. Weaver thought he had a strike there to Abad. Instead, it's two and two. Andy at 3:04 for the Pawsocks. We need to get a Pawtucket score tonight. They were, uh, I think, scheduled to play tonight, leading Ottawa in the playoff series, two games to none. Now looking for the sweep tonight. But trailing one to nothing in the sixth. We are told. Out of play to the left. At third, two out, nine to one, Boston in the seventh inning. A 
bad rolls one foul. Well, we wish Lawyer Malloy well. Not only a terrific player for the Patriots for seven years, but a really good guy. Good guy in the community. And uh, good luck to him. to the mound goes the new catcher Flaherty to chat with Weaver. They have action in their bullpen. The Weaver certainly done a nice job. That's Jorge De Paula warming up in their bullpen. Just recently called up from Columbus. So the Yankees have made quite a few additions over the last couple of days to their roster both in the pitching and fielding department. Drew Henson called up. That's the big story and a big surprise. Henson considered a top prospect. Third baseman of course the terrific quarterback at the University of Michigan. Many thought he had a very bright future in the NFL as a quarterback elected to play baseball. He has struggled mightily. Rumors in recent days that he was going to abandon baseball and resume his football career and he said at a press conference today that those reports are not true. Intends to continue with baseball. A bat, a routine fly to center after a lengthy at bat. He is retired on the fly ball to Williams. The Red Sox leave a runner at third, but at the seventh inning stretch, they lead nine to one. It's time for news from around the majors, brought to you by Hewlett Packard. Tempers flaring at this time of the year. The Cubs reliever Antonio Alfonseca was suspended today for seven games for bumping umpire Justin Clem a couple of days ago. An argument about a ball that the Cubs thought hit the left field line. Clem called it foul and Alfonseca came out of the bullpen and bumped Clem. Mike Riley one of the umpires said it was the one of the severest attacks of an umpire he's seen in his 27 years in the big leagues and Alfonseca got seven games for it and Blue Jays manager Carlos Tosca sprayed spittle on Tim Timmons a lot of alliteration in that sentence and it results in a one game suspension. Don't spit when you argue with the umps. That's news from around the majors. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard. Nine to one Red Sox. Grady Little deciding here that six innings is enough with an eight run lead. Well, he'll turn it over to the bullpen right here. We get nine outs. Pedro through 94 pitches. Here's Scott Sauerbeck. Sauerbeck making his 19th appearance, a record of 0 1. His last coming Wednesday against the White Sox, two thirds of an inning in that game, and did have a strikeout. I thought Pedro might come out for the seventh and leave the uh, bullpen uh, reliable or responsible to get six outs in this ball game. We have Damian Jackson in also at shortstop, uh, replacing Garcia Parra. A bad hit for Garcia Parra. Jackson at, at shortstop. Glenn Geffner from the Red Sox PR department tells us nothing wrong with Nomar. Just, just to get him out of the game. Out of the ball game. I would have liked to have seen one more inning from Pedro to feel a little bit better about this, Jerry. What was his pitch count? 94? 94. Maybe uh, one start removed from the Rocky outing last time. Still building his strength. I don't know. You know you're trying to find reasons. They want to reduce the wear and tear. And you would think an eight run lead would be safe. But we have seen. A few things this year that could lead you to think this one is not comfortably sewn up yet. No, he not not to the hundred pitches yet, and uh, with one more inning, the seventh, he'd be right around that mark. You know, obviously a little bit over that. Matt Suey up there with a count of one and one. He is grounded out twice. Pedro pitched six innings, allowed one run on four hits. He walked one and struck out nine. Sweeping breaking ball missed two and one. A fastball high three and one. This has been the problem for Sauer Becky does not throw enough strikes. A 
And just exactly what Brady Little and Dave Wallace did not want to see. A leadoff walk with an eight run lead. Now it's 12 walks now for Sauer back in 10 strikeouts in 10 innings. Well, here's Aaron Boone. He is lined sharply to third and struck out. Strike one. We talked about Drew Henson, a surprising call up from the minors for the Yankees. Swing and a miss by Boone. A lot of people felt like when the Yankees made the trade at the deadline to go out and get Boone, that was a rather definitive statement that now perhaps Henson is not the third baseman of the future as he had been thought to be all along. Just my opinion, Sean, but I think they went about things wrong with Henson. They started him too high in the organization. And here's a guy that really has not played a lot of baseball. He was focused on football in college. Obviously a very talented guy. Why put him at a level where he could possibly be overmatched? And that's exactly what happened to him. Now, how do you rebound out of that? He never really did. He's Send him hitting there. just 234 for Columbus this year. Let him start at A ball. Let him get his feet on the ground down there. Obviously, he's better than those players. Build up some confidence, move him up to double A, and eventually get him to triple A. Why start him at that high of a level for a guy that was really focused on football? Backdoor breaking ball missed. And Sauerbeck takes a stroll. Two and two. Lead off man on Matsui at first, bottom of the seventh. Red Sox leading nine to one. Red Sox jumped out to a three nothing lead after one, four nothing after two, eight nothing after three. Each team scored a run in the sixth. Line to center of base hit. See, one of the problems I have, I guess one of the things that bothers me the most about Grady Little is the fact that when he brings a reliever like Salabek in the game, he'll be thrown down in the bullpen. It's almost like you expect it to go one, two, three. It doesn't happen that way a lot. And now we still have nobody up. I know it's a nine to one game, but things happen very quickly in this game. You gotta bring a reliever in in this situation. You maybe have somebody just loosening, you know, getting his arm loose so it doesn't take that long to warm up. You have a little trouble, you can quickly go to that bullpen. You got two runners on already, and now just starting to get someone up. I just think, you know, we're, we're Pretty well into September now, a few days into September. This is your last series against the Yankees. Your last chance to gain ground head to head. There's Brandon Lyon. And the way this Red Sox bullpen has pitched all year, Pedro clearly having a good night. But why not have him go one more inning and get yourself three outs closer to a win that you really, really need? I agree. To me, you don't play this game at this time of the year like it's a nine to one game. You play this like it's a one to nothing game. Yeah. This Even is September. No more. I mean, it's nice to get Andy A. Bad in the bat, but uh, there'll, there'll be time. There might that. be <laughs> another time for that down the road. And now he's put himself in a situation where you can see he's uh, a little nervous, even with the eight-run lead. There's a base hit to right. Juan Rivera, the pinch hitter, delivers. Down by eight with nobody out. Willie Randolph isn't going to take a chance waving Matsui around. So three straight men have reached against Sauerbeck on a walk and two singles. And Jason Veritek with his arm around Sauerbeck. Here we go again. Juan Rivera going to the opposite field, so a walk. And back to back hits the Yankees very quickly have bases loaded. They have nobody out and the Red Sox still have to get nine outs to win this game. That's so obviously not taking the chance down by eight runs with nobody out. So here's Enrique Wilson. No bad right handed against Sauerbeck. He was two for two at two doubles left handed against Pedro. And he takes a belt high breaking ball for strike one. He scored their run last inning. Just a 208 career hitter with the bases loaded. He does have three grand slams. 
Infield a double play depth. They give him some room in left center field in the outfield. Ball well outside. After Wilson, it's the top of the order. Alfonso Soriano on deck. Swing and a miss. He helps Auerbeck chasing the ball in the dirt. Uh, Wilson's not going to get a hit because Pedro's not out there. <laughs> Sauerbeck's good at chasing bad pitches. The one two pitch. Chop foul. Sauerbeck tied him up with a breaking ball. Back door breaking ball missed. Now the 2 2. Chop foul. This will probably be the last battle for Sauerbeck. You got Soriano coming up next, and there is a right handed action in the bullpen. Matsui, Boone, and Garcia, excuse me, Rivera, the pinch hitter for Garcia, are the runners. Wilson is battling Sauerbeck. It's still two and two. Alan Embry has joined Brandon Lyon now in the bullpen. And yet another foul ball. Sauerbeck keeps throwing that breaking ball into the hands, and Wilson keeps chopping it away. Sauerbeck, 31 years old, an Ohio native. Played four years of baseball at Miami of Ohio. Started his career in the Mets organization, never made it to the majors with them, then on to Pittsburgh. Hit to second, a double play ball. And they turn it. Maloney, Jackson, and Millar run scores, but the Red Sox will take that trade off. Matsui in from third to make it 9 to 2. And no RBI for Wilson as a result of the double play. Now just for the doctor ordered here, bases loaded, nobody out. Certainly give up the one more run to get the two quick outs. Maloney to Jackson, plenty of time to get Wilson. Told you Wilson wouldn't get a hit. <laughs> the only guy who's ever been sorry to see Pedro Martinez go out yeah, of the game. Yeah, yeah. He was probably the only Yankee upset when he saw him leave after six. Now the top of the order in Soriano. Strike one. He's one for three. He doubled a right center to drive in their run last inning. As he and Wilson hit back to back doubles. Wilson then Soriano. Nine runs, 14 hits for Boston, two runs and six hits for New York. Neither team has made an error. Pass Sauer, Beck a base hit. And after the double play, Grady Little. Left him in there to pitch to the right hander, hoping that Soriano would get out of the inning, or rather, Sauerbeck could get out of the inning by getting Soriano and allowing just the one run. But it did not happen. It's a two run inning as Aaron Boone came in from third. Because it is the left handed hitting Johnson. Sauerbeck continues. He's given up two runs on three hits and a walk. And throw strike one to Johnson. Seattle has come from behind to take a four to two lead over Baltimore. They're in the seventh inning now at Camden Yards. And a final in the American League. 
Toronto beat Detroit eight to five. I'll give you a full check of the scoreboard coming up in just a little while. Owen to the count on Johnson. He's the nephew of Larry Bowen with the exception of that disastrous game for the Phillies Monday against the Red Sox. The Phillies in the midst of a great run. Wow. That looked like a good pitch. Sauerbeck wanted it. Joe West didn't give it to him and the inning continues one and two. Check swing and a foul ball. Since losing that game to the Red Sox Monday, the Phillies have won three in a row. And of course, they had won three in a row going into that game. So they've won six of seven. I like one of those losses that could send a team right back in a tailspin, but the Phillies battled back, bounced yeah. back in their last series. Jose Mesa gave it up again last night, but they did come back to win that game. That was an ugly game he did on Monday. Uh. Yes, it was. <laughs> but a win is a win. Yeah. Foul ball. This will be the 30th pitch of the inning of coming to Sauerbeck. Now these two teams in the games that we've uh, had this year have not exactly been snappy affairs either. The Red Sox and the Yankee games are very long drawn out games. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. First strike up for Sauerbeck. That ends the inning after 7 9 to 3 Boston. After the game, it's nightcast at 10 on UPN 38. Sarah Underwood and Ted Wayman will give you the latest news that affects you. So if you watch news at 10 o'clock, watch nightcast at 10. There'll also be some news that might not affect you. Tonight after the game on UPN 38. Let's hope that something that does not affect us is Hurricane Fabian. That's among the stories that they'll be covering. Uh, Bermuda's tonight. getting hit pretty hard by uh, Hurricane Fabian. I had my eye on that one all day. I was watching the Weather Channel. You're monitoring uh, Dr. Steve Lyons, former Red Sox infielder, as their hurricane expert, I believe. I was also uh, monitoring the golf uh, storm that's uh, down in Florida because I had family members tra have traveling down to Florida today. And to play golf? No, to go to school. Oh, the golf storm. I thought you said the golf. Uh, yeah, the golf storm. Coming golf, from, yeah. Yes. Golf. That was, the last time I checked, that was tropical. Depression number 12 or something. Right. Guess they decided we're not going to name these things anymore. It's just give them numbers. It's too hard to pick up names. I guess it's, it's worse on the West Coast than on the East Coast, and uh, my members were going toward the East Coast. So they were okay. They were fine. Ron Rivera out in the right field taking over for Kareem Garcia. And Jorge DePaula making his major league debut for the New York Yankees. Called up from Columbus. He was 10 and 11 at Columbus. Originally signed by the Rockies back in the 1997, came to the Yankees in a trade, and tonight making his debut against the Red Sox. Exciting time for DePaula, and he hits Manny Ramirez, who didn't like it. And he's still looking in the direction of DePaula. Well, that could be interesting. 0 2 count, uh, trying to go inside on Ramirez. He hits Manny with the pitch. And generally this year when a Red Sox player has been hit there has been quick retaliation by the Red Sox. So we'll see what happens after this. Kapler coming into the game now for Manny. See Manny looking out toward the mound after getting hit on the 0-2 count. So Manny was on base three times tonight a single a walk and a hit by pitch. Kapler runs for him. Good speed at first for the Red Sox leading nine to three in the eighth. Jeff Weaver an excellent outing four and two thirds innings of one run relief. He gave up five hits. And a walk. He struck out three. 
And that takes care of that. A double play. Ortiz the batter, Cap with the runner, and they both head back to the dugout. How much reaction time here for a Nick Johnson at first base? A line shot by Ortiz, and uh, actually nothing Cap can do. That he's only one step towards second. He's doubled up. So the hit batter, a hard line drive, and looking at uh, Ortiz there. At first, I thought he might have hurt himself on the swing, but he just never had a chance to move out of the box. Two outs now, and the base is empty. Ortiz two for five with a single and a double, an RBI and a run score. Here's Millar, one for four. He singled and scored in the third. Paula, 24 years old, chases that grounder foul. He's from the Dominican Republic. 6-1, they list him at 160. I would say he weighs a little more than that. Oh, yeah, he's got to weigh more than 160. Probably 160 when he signed at 16 years old. You know, those stripes can make you look skinnier, though, they say. Doesn't work for David Wells. David Wells will be pitching Sunday, right? Sunday against John Burkett in this series. Yes. Battling a back problem on and off. Against Jeff Supon, actually. I believe. I thought it was Wakefield tomorrow and then uh, Burkett. I must be wrong. Yes, Red Sox uh, notes say Supon. Oh, then I'm definitely wrong. Because they had never wrong the notes. No. Red Sox. What did I get Burkett? With Glenn Geffner, I think, have gone to the best press notes in the league, by the way. Which is a Absolutely no interest to anybody watching this telecast except for us. Very helpful to us. There's no question about that. We just corrected a mistake I made because of the notes. People would expect to see Burkett if they listen to me. Instead, they see Supon on Sunday. Uh, Burkett is going to pitch Monday in Baltimore. Oh, okay. I knew he was close. <laughs> Pitches every five days. So basically, you probably had about a one out of five chance at the very least, even without any deductive reasoning or thinking about it. You just guessed about a 20% chance. Now, are Sarah and Ted going to be doing the uh, news from the movie theater tonight, or are they going to leave the big screen thing and head back to the uh, palatial studios? I think Soldier they're on studio. the way back to the studio. You know this whole thing about the hurricanes and the names and the numbers. Doesn't it seem to you they lean toward the unusual names, like Fabian? You know, it's not a common name. They're, it's very rarely Bob or Sue. You know, it's well, names have changed too throughout the years. I mean, uh, a lot of different kind of names now. But the hurricane names don't catch up, like Gertrude. You know, there are very few Gertrudes now. But it seems like every G hurricane is Gertrude. Hurricane Giambi. Yeah. And I think they stopped trying. I'm watching the thing the other day on the Weather Channel, and they talk about, like, Tropical Depression number 12. What'd they just say? Bag the names, forget about it, we can't agree on a name. Well, DePaul is out of his first inning unscathed, just in the nick of time, in fact. We go to the bottom of the eighth, nine to three, Red Sox. The game summary is brought to you by Infinity, makers of innovative high-performance premium vehicles. Red Sox dominating this one from the start. They got three runs in the first on five singles, a run in the second. Then four in the third, highlighted by Johnny Damon's bases loaded triple. Every Red Sox starter has a hit. Soriano has driven in two of the three Yankee runs. A dreadful outing for Andy Pettit, while Pedro Martinez was very sharp, bouncing back from that rocky outing against the Yankees last weekend. Game summary brought to you by Infinity. We head to the bottom of the eighth, 9-3 Boston. And a new pitcher for the Red Sox is... Alan Embry, 
And his first pitch is a belt high strike to Bernie Williams. Emery making his 59th appearance for the Red Sox. He is 4-1 and one on the season. Emery with uh, 41 strikeouts in 51 innings. Last outing was the blown save Monday against uh, Philadelphia in that makeup game of interleague play. What was that all about? Morgan playing right as Emery starting into his delivery. These Yankees, Jerry, you know, get them down by six, and all of a sudden they want to cheat and go to dirty tricks. <laughs> We're probably going to have Bob Shepard yell now in the middle of this delivery from Embry. Noonan. Tomahawk out of play to the right. Now Bob Shepard will be, should be heading over to the Meadowlands this weekend. The Giants open up at home? Yes. So he'll be going from Yankee Stadium to the Meadowlands. The New York football giants open. Do we know how old Bob Shepard is? I really don't know. Legendary public address announcer. Would it be impolite to ask? Bounced up the middle and off the glove of Jackson. Williams reaches to begin the Yankee eight. Seems like of all the positions that Damian Jackson has played this year, he has not played a lot of shortstop. Goes to his left, certainly within his range, but uh, never got the ball into his glove. His glove came up too soon. They've charged Jackson with an error. It's not going to make Bernie Williams happy, especially here at home. A lot of times at home, you think you're going to get those close calls. See Bernie shaking his head. He just got the word on the official scoring. Maybe that's what it was. Yep. Guaranteed. I don't know. I think Lee Mazzilli said something to him. He was shaking his head. I doubt it. You lose a nine to three. Should they really be that hung up on an official scoring decision? That's the way players are. We've all been in that same situation. Well, that's a sad commentary on American sports. Uh oh. Do I have a half an hour? The way this thing's rolling along, you got all the time you want. <laughs> this hasn't exactly been, I mean, it's, a, it's nice that the Red Sox were ahead 9 to 3. This has not exactly been a great ball game. No. But we'll take a bad 9 to 3. And Absolutely. You know, I don't want to get out the pom poms here, but you know it's, it's a good thing if the Red Sox are ahead. For most people watching the telecast, that's the definition of a good game. Giambi to center, one out. Friends, your New England Ford tickets have your tickets to an exciting Red Sox home game. To enter, send your name, address, and phone number to New England Ford dealers ticket giveaway. P.O. Box 276 Boston 02135. There is no purchase necessary. And this opportunity is brought to you by. Guess who, Jerry? Who's bringing us this opportunity? New England Ford. Wow. Are you sharp? Now, don't you get me wrong. But I am very happy also as a 9 3 Red Sox lead. And it's still be 9 3 after that foul ball. But everything happened early in this game. First three innings. Yeah, if you tuned in late, you missed the whole thing. I which mean, is why, folks, you know, you should make your Friday night viewing schedule to be in front of that TV promptly at 7 o'clock every week. A new bat for John Flaherty up for the first time tonight. Jorge Posada, the starting catcher, with one for three. Flaherty's hitting 247 for the year with four homers and 12 runs batted in. Uh, Dan Roach, our fine roving reporter. Went over and spoke with Rick Cerrone, not the same Rick Cerrone who used to catch for both of these two teams, a different Rick Cerrone, who is the PR man for the Yankees. He says Bob Shepard is age unknown. Bob doesn't want anyone to know, and nobody seems to know. He doesn't even want to be seen as he hides behind a large microphone. One of the great thrills of uh, being a Major League Baseball player to have your name introduced here at Yankee Stadium by Bob Shepard. Clarity called out on strikes. For the second out of the inning, first strikeout for Embry, the 11th Red Sox pitchers tonight. 
Jeffrey just going with the fastball and gets it uh, right over the outside corner to John Flaherty. Emory actually could be out of this inning. Uh, Damian Jackson made that uh, opening play against Bernie Williams, that Bernie thought was a hit, but did not go as a hit. I'm trying to stir something up between the two of them, or uh, <laughs> you know, this loony negative media. Now Bob Shepard has been the PA announcer here since 1951. If I'm not, uh, I believe he was a professor at Yale, wasn't it? Uh, Colgate, aside, one of these uh, fancy schools. St. John's. He's working on a